Yes, Infiniti's freshly redone M56 has a big old V8 and sinuous lines, but what sets it apart is how much it can automate that pesky process we call driving. Let's check that tech. Before we even get to cabin tech, we have to run down the driver assistance tech. There's adaptive cruise control to maintain a set distance, not just a set speed. Lane departure warning tells you when you're drifting out of your lane, and lane departure prevention will vector brake the car back into the lane. Blind spot warning is a fairly common tech in higher end cars these days, but this car's blind spot intervention is a first, nudging you away from the car you're about to clip in your blind spot. Distance Control Assist makes sure you'll almost never rear-end someone in everyday traffic. I drove over a mile in this stop-and-go traffic and only used the gas pedal. The car handled all the braking, even coming to a complete stop several times. And at higher speeds, Infinity Brake Assist warns of a pending collision and applies the brakes to mitigate the impact. Now, do you see what I see? This car is kind of small on me. It's not that small a car, but inside it felt kind of tight the minute I got in it. There's a lot of uh, protruding center stack here. This potbelly stove of the center console is a big boy. It's kind of bulging here. There's a lot of curved things that uh, kind of make an incursion on the space you've got in the vehicle. Now, of course, our car is loaded, so let's start the grand tour. AM, FM radio, no HD radio here yet. XM is your satellite choice that also brings you your traffic and your weather, but the good stuff happens under disc slash aux. DVD player, when you're in park, of course. Nice, generous screen, good resolution, nice and bright. I like when they do an eyebrow like that over the monitor. Does wonders to kill all kinds of ambient light that happens while you're driving. Keep going, you get to your other optical choice, which is CD. Single slot, because we can rip, we'll get to that in a minute. That, of course, would be right here under Music Box. They carve out 9.3 gigabytes for you to rip music to. Bluetooth audio, streaming, A2DP off my paired smartphone, and iPod. I've got that here in the console, standard USB jack right here. No special connector needed. Notice what I didn't say. Aux jack. Nothing. Not available. This is the first vehicle I've seen that has lots of advanced inputs, but is now cutting aux from the bottom of the list. But our car has got the big boy system, 16 speakers, 5.1 surround, that goes nicely with the DVD ability, and a whole bunch of ways to alter the tone and the contour of the audio that go along with that, including audio pilot and center point Bose technologies. Now, shy of BMW, I don't think anybody has as generous a screen up there in the dash. This is nice and tall and wide. It's 4.3. It's not really 16.9 ultra wide the way BMW is. Infinity loves this bird's eye flyover 3D rendering thing. Check this out. Eco Drive. This lets you tell the Eco pedal how much to push back. That's the gas pedal in Infinity speak. It'll actually push back. You'll feel the pedal do it and use less gas. No one else does this. Cabin air filtration is handled via an electrostatic plasma cluster as well as a grape polyphenol filter. Yes, it uses an extract from grape seeds to reduce allergens. Standard 5.6 liter V8, if by standard you mean like a jewel. Smooth, powerful, ready to run. 420 horsepower, 417 foot-pounds of torque. Brings this 4,200 some odd pounds sedan to 60 in about five seconds. 1623 is your MPG, you know. Nothing to write home about, but given the fact that you've got the barn burner M and not the six cylinder, that's the price of admission. One gearbox choice in this guy, a seven speed automatic with downshift rev matching and adaptive shift learning. You know, I love the engine in this car. It's absolutely smooth and slick. It's like Audi slick, really ready to run. The power doesn't ever hesitate, which is a rarity these days. It's just liquid, that's the best word for it. I think the best way to put it is this car is very Japanese. Light touch on all the controls. No paddles for shifting, by the way. Just all down here on the stick, which I'm seeing more and more of. Very quiet and jewel-like. And kind of missing some soul. I mean, this is not Infiniti's most soulful or distinctive car. The Gs have a lot more something to them. This car is a little bit highly competent vanilla. 
I've got no time for this sport setting here on this drive mode controller. I'd rather just snap the thing over here in manual mode and do it myself because the sport mode, I don't know, it doesn't doesn't read what I want as well as I'd like it to. And then around town driving, when you just want the car to be more responsive in everyday use, it's kind of jerky. Acceleration happens, you know, like that. Uh, not cool. So I just leave it in standard mode and mix my own. An M56 runs 58.4. Add three grand for all-wheel drive. The tech package brings you all those driver assistance technologies for 3,000 more. Get the deluxe touring package to complete the scenetization of this car which rolls in Bose surround audio, the additional speakers, the forest air technology with that grapeseed allergy filter, and a bunch of cabin trim upgrades.